Okay. Welcome to our lectures. I'm going to go live right now. And here we go. We are live. All right. Victor, welcome. So glad you're here. This is the culmination of your training toward instructor and you have worked super hard. You've been there at almost every single dive that we've had in pool session and uh, the students love you. The leadership team loves you. We're just so glad that you're with us. And I know we just had a lecture by you last week that was 30 minutes long. Tonight we have two lectures. These were assigned topics to you. And one you didn't get until 24 hours ago and the other one you got a week's notice. So how are you feeling? I'm ready to go. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I gave you some topics that are a little challenging to teach about, but they're very, very important. And oh, so, definitely. yes. So um, I, I'm really glad that you're going to be teaching about them and uh, want to ask you what has been your favorite thing about working on your instructor certification so far? Well, I think refreshing uh, all this knowledge, you know, uh, as when you are an experienced diver, uh, you get a lot of things for granted, but it's good to, you know, to go back and refresh all the knowledge and uh, refresh some skills and, you know, just get ready to share that knowledge with other divers who wants to get into the industry. So uh, I've, it's been a great journey and you have made it great for me and I appreciate that. Well, thank you for being a part of the team and we look forward to continuing to get to work with you after you earn your instructor certification. And I know you have some really exciting things that are about to happen. So for anyone who hasn't heard yet, what's the very first thing you're gonna do with the cert certification? Well, in two weeks, I already have a group of eight kids, 12 to 18, which are gonna be training uh, not only to get a scuba certified, but also they're gonna learn about uh, aquatic science in the process. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited. I'm gonna be working with the 4-H uh, Foundation here in the county. And in the future, I really look forward to try to reach out to some uh, underserved groups of, of people, especially youth. I, I want to work with youth and um, people with disabilities and veterans. I have learned that from you and I think it's, it's an amazing work and I want to be part of it, definitely. Awesome. Well, Ronnie just joined us. Ronnie earned his instructor certification a few days ago. Thanks for being here, Ronnie. We have other members of the leadership team who are here in Zoom, but we're also live on Facebook. So I know we have a bigger audience. So Victor, whenever you're ready, you have exactly 15 minutes from when you begin to present your first topic. Okay. And we'll have question and answer after you're completed um, with the, the first topic, and then we'll move into the second topic. Good, let me get my uh, time here. So I follow my time and I'm gonna, Use this. Good. All right. So good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining me tonight for these uh, two lectures um, towards my instructor certification. The first lecture is going to be about preventing ear and sinus issues. Um, through this lecture, I'm going to talk about ear and sinus anatomy, uh, of course, Boyle's Law. Uh, ear and sinus issues, and then how to prevent these issues. And let's start with the ear anatomy. So the middle ear is a small, a small air-filled ca uh, cavity surrounded by the bony structures of the skull. The middle ear uh, here in the center, right, um, has several air-filled connections to it. The first will be the eustachian tube, which is this one going down. Uh, which connects the middle ear with the throat. The second is the mastoid sinus that has air filled spaces in the mastoid bone. And then, uh, and those are connected to the middle ear. Then the oval window and round window are membranes that covers the opening to the fluid filled inner ear. And th that uh, is, is right here. 
This is the oval window and down here is the round window. And this is the inner ear. Um, so the round window membrane is much thinner, more fragile and the, than the oval uh, window. Finally, there is a tympanic membrane, most usually uh, we know as the eardrum uh, that covers and seals the opening to the outer canal. Okay, so uh, it is very important to be aware of the structure of the ear and these three parts because uh, this is very important for diving and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Then we have the pronasal sinus anatomy or sinuses in general, uh, which are uh, air-filled cavities in the skull. There are four main sets of sinus that are connected to the nose. Uh, we have the frontal sinus right here uh, above the eyes. We have the maxillary uh, sinuses below the eyes in the cheekbone. So it's right here and here. Uh, then we have the edmoidal sinuses at the base of the nose. So that's it's gonna be uh, this one here, barely seen on this frontal picture. And then the sph uh, sphenoidal uh, sinuses, uh, which are deep inside the middle of the skull. So right here behind. All these spaces are air filled. So the sinuses are connected with the nose via small openings called ostia. They are usually open, and at times, mucus secretions may block the sinus opening. This is especially uh, likely under any condition that may cause uh, congestion. The lining of the sinus is a soft mucus membrane that is engorged with blood vessels. So all as, as we just uh, saw with the ear, the sinus uh, had, they both share the same condition that is the uh, air spaces. So now we move to Boyle's law and why that? You know, Boyle's law is one of the main law that uh, drives what we do as divers. So Boyle's law state that if a temperature remains constant, the pressure and volume of any gas are inversely related. Um, another way to state that uh, part is, um, is as pressure increase, volume decreases. So as we go down to the bottom of the ocean and the, we increase the depth, we also are increasing the pressure. Therefore, the volume is decreasing. And then as we ascend and the pressure decrease, the volume starts to increase again. Sometimes Boyle's law is referred as the volume and pressure law. And this is the, uh, the one that directly relates to the main ear and sinus issues in scuba diving. Now, there are other Boyle's law effects. Um, Boyle's law also uh, regulates the breathing volume, uh, ear clearing, uh, mass squeeze, and wetsuit compression. So. As we, uh, as we suffer uh, a pressure as we uh, descend and we have air-filled cavities in our uh, body, not only inside of skull or, or middle yield, but also or mass or lungs, are, um, uh, the, the pressure has an impact on those uh, areas. And also, uh, is what is called the pressure injuries. And that's how I learned, I remember like 30 years ago when I did my first one. So almost every diver at one time or another has felt pressure and pain in their ears as they have descent to depth. During descent, the increasing pressure of the surrounding water is transmitted through the tissues and fluid that surrounds the middle ear causing a compression of the air space. The diver must compensate for the pressure increase by introducing air through the staking tube to balance the increase of pressure and equalize the air space. Um, <clears throat> procedures to equalize are, are, are presented in a different slide. So the tissues lining in the middle ear will swell as blood vessels become uh, distended those uh, blood vessels may, uh, may uh, have you know, what is called hemorrhage and bleeding into the middle ear could occur. 
Uh, the tympanic membrane may stretch uh, to the point that it ruptures. In inward, the distension of the eardrum may also force uh, the three bones, the malleus, incus, and stap staps, I'm sorry, and I practice this several times, inwards into uh, the point that the staps is pushed through the elbow window membrane, uh, or more commonly, the round window uh, uh, ruptures. So the same happens with the diver's sinus. Uh, as a diver descend or ascend, air usually moves freely in and out of the sinus. Normally, the equalization of sinus takes little or no effort on the part of the diver. However, congestion sinus and nasal inflammation or growth in the nasal passage may prevent the exchange of air uh, between the nose and the sinus. So here we see with the red uh, arrow how the pressure is bending the eardrum. And therefore, we need to equalize the pressure in the middle ear to uh, remove that extra pressure from the, extern from the environment, from the external thing. Now, the third uh, thing that can happen is um, there is also a chance for the same situation upon ascent which is called the reverse block or squeeze. The air in the middle ear expands up an ascent like every other uh, um, gas in our body, okay? And uh, this is usually released uh, without any effort of the diver part. In most cases, the expanding air escapes naturally through the second tube. There are cases that uh, there may be, the air may be blocked from this escape rope. The result is that the tympanic membrane is extended in an outward fashion. So here we see in this figure how it is going back uh, outwards because the pressure, the uh, pressure of, from the air in the middle ear is higher than the pressure in the environment. Uh, the result is that the tympanic membrane is extended. Um, and there may be enough uh, pressure build up in the middle ear to cause the eardrum to rupture. And inner ear damage from this uh, pressure buildup is also possible. Uh, the, the, the diver will notice upon a sand increase in pain uh, in the affect ears. Um, okay. And so that's why we always say, please clear early and, oft early and often. Uh, if you start feeling some uh, problems with your or pain in your ears, ascend a few feet and try to clear again. And uh, please remember to use the hand signal to uh, communicate to your dive body that you are having uh, clearing issues, which is something is going on with or uh, ear, okay? So remember something is wrong with my ear is, a, is the way to signal that. Now, there are many ways that we can clear our airways, or in this, in this case, uh, especially our ear. Uh, the most common is the Valsaba maneuver, uh, which just pinch your nose and gently, gently, and this is a very important word, gently blow air through your nose. That way you will feel the air passing through your staking tubes into your middle ear, and you will hear that pop, uh, which is uh, the moment that uh, you equalize. The same way well, will happen if you do the voluntary tubal opening where you tense your throat and push your jaw forward like this and just push forward on the water and that will open that uh, the second tube and let the air uh, flow. Uh, there are many others, the Twin B maneuver, the Franco maneuver, uh, Lowry technique, Ekman technique, and uh, all of these have their pros and cons. And it's just a matter that if you uh, try to practice each one of those, uh, it's just a, a slight diff, uh, variation of the Valsalva and the twelve opening uh, techniques. So, but what happens uh, on ascent? And we mentioned that a little bit. So uh, up on ascent, we will have the reverse block, okay? And if, if the airway is not congested, then that extra pressure that is built in the middle ears on the sinus will be uh, released by the tubes uh, with no problem at all. Now, 
uh, it's very important to prevent ear and sinus issues. And the first one is to remember that uh, please don't dive if you have any type of congestion or cold. And sometimes if you, if you have just a little bit congestion or some uh, congestion due to uh, allergies, you can use this uh, the Sudafed uh, 120 milligrams, uh, take one before the dive and, um, and that will help you with uh, the clearing. However, it's very important to make sure that we don't have any excess mucus in, uh, in our uh, sinus because then we might suffer, it, it, you might be able to, um, to clear during descent, but then you might uh, suffer for, from the uh, re reverse block as we just mentioned, okay? Here in the top uh, right picture, we see how the stacking uh, tube is blocked uh, because it's irritated, there must be mucus or there are different uh, reasons why this it's just very tight and, uh, and then it doesn't allow the flow of air uh, either way, okay? Uh, to compensate during descent or to uh, release the excess of pressure when, as you ascend. Uh, one uh, recommendation for some divers, and this works great for some divers, are the earplugs for scuba. Ducks plugs, uh, ducks pro plugs are safe to use for scuba diving. Uh, our instructor, uh, Gabrielle, she's an uh, uh, authorized uh, dealer for these ones. And the, the great thing about these plugs uh, is that they're vented to a low equalization. If you see very close to the picture, there is a small hole there that is what exactly allows you to equalize. Don't try to use other type of plugs with, without these openings because that will create actually uh, a bigger problem with your equalization. Uh, there is a website that you can uh, check that out, but if you're interested in these pro plugs, please uh, reach out to our uh, instructor. So as a review, uh, the middle ear and paranasal sinuses and pressure are completely related during the dive. Uh, Boyce law is the main uh, diving law that uh, address that because as we descend, the pressure increases and it will uh, compress the, the air cavities. Uh, so remember to clear uh, early and often uh, during ascent. Uh, if you have any problem uh, during ascent a few feet, clear and use your hand signal as you see in the picture, something is wrong with my ear and use the right clearing technique, what might work for me, maybe it doesn't work for you. So practice uh, all different techniques and just uh, get the one that uh, basically is, is better for you. Of course, avoid diving if congested and use all preventive measures, whether it be mats or the use of plugs. Uh, with that, I think I'm right on time. And uh, I appreciate, and if you have any question, I'd be more than glad. This is a topic that we can talk for an hour. Uh, so I, I appreciate it. And if you have any question, I'll be uh, uh, glad to take it. Thank you. Any questions for Victor? I'll ask one while we're waiting for somebody to come up with a question. So, uh, Victor, why do you think so many uh, new divers have a difficult time with their ears? What's really happening? Well, you know, our body is naturally adapted to not suffer for, from these pressure variations. So, I've, I've, you know, if you start uh, uh, experiencing uh, those changes, it, it might be a new experience for a lot of them. Uh, not knowing, you know, how to really handle the maneuvers to equalize. Uh, some people will blow too hard and actually uh, cause themselves a, a bigger damage uh, than just trying gently to blow during uh, clearing the clearing technique. So um, it, it just, it, it takes a little bit of practice. I will suggest sometimes 
try to practice before going in the water. Make sure you your airways are clear and that you can uh, that you feel that you're clearing your ears, uh, especially. And uh, and and that would be better. So when you go in the water, you you will be ready to uh, go smooth. And remember, you have to keep that in mind. Start early and 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 do it often. That don't wait until you start to feel the pain to try to clear. Do it constantly all the way down to the bottom. And what role does stress play in ear clearing? Well, you know, stress can narrow our attention. So sometimes we, if, if we are stressed, we might, might be paying more attention to other issues and not, uh, and not maybe uh, clearing might not be one of those. So uh, you might realize that you're having uh, clearing or ear issues uh, when, when it's, it's the pain is, is too hard or where you are already blocked. Um, so stress is also can increase uh, the fluids in, inside of your body, uh, which may cause uh, some kind of blockage. Uh, so it, it's very important to uh, try to control anxiety and try to reduce uh, all type of most uh, the stress that we might have before any dive. And that will also help you, uh, you know, to not suffer from these issues. Very good. And um, so 50% of calls to Divers Alert Network are actually about ear issues. So this is why this is such an important topic. Uh, anyone else have questions who's here with us? And I'll just check the Facebook Live and make sure I'm not missing any questions there. Does anyone have questions? All right, if I don't see any questions, let's go ahead and move on to your second topic. It was more than ready. It was the next slide. <laughs> I put Perfect. everything together so in, in one person. Good, all right, your 15 minutes shall begin right now. All right, so the second lecture is about scuba diving physics. Again, this is a topic that we can talk uh, for hours. So to try to compress this in 50 minutes is, is a big challenge. It might sound a little bit, um, you know, uh, very basic, uh, but it's important to, uh, to go through some of these things. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the principle of physics, uh, some measurements used in physics, gaze related to diving and gas loss. Uh, we're gonna talk about buoyancy and our cumulus principle, air consumption, and energy in the underwater um, environment. So uh, as humans, we're physically adapt to the natural land environment, which means that the physics of day-to-day -day living is instinctive. Uh, when we come across an environment that can be accessed naturally, we create a process designed on the principles of physics that will provide access to these environments. Um, so physics is the study characteristics and interaction of matter and energy. Underwater, there are various type of matter and energy that are important to understand, especially if when we are um, scuba diving, right? So as we, as I say here, matter and energy, there are a lot of factors that uh, drive those. Um, when we, uh, Many of the categories uh, that we see here, like pressure, temperature, volume, distance or land, the area, the weight, density, um, these are categories that actually can be subdivided into different types. To fully understand uh, and apply the various laws of physics, there are two predominant systems of measurement, which are the metric and imperial. Uh, I was born and raised under the metric system, and I know here in U.S. it's, it's very common to use the imperial. So I'm going to uh, focus on that. Terms like atmospheric pressure or the air pressure at sea level uh, and express is expressed in ATA, right? With uh, the hydrostatic pressure is the weight exerted by the fluid, in this case the water, due to the force of gravity and it's expressed in PSI uh, per feet. 
Uh, we have gauge pressure which does not take into account the atmospheric pressure. It's, so it's kind of the hydrostatic pressure. Uh, and the absolute pressure, which is used to describe the total pressure exert, uh, on an object by both the atmospheric and, um, and the hydrostatic pressure. Here we have some formulas that are very uh, important when it comes to understand the physics of, uh, of, these, uh, of, of, of these factors. So pressure we know is the force by area or P is, is equal to F over A. Uh, absolute, absolute pressure, as I des described, is that uh, divided, in this case, for seawater, divided be between 33, uh, divided ATA plus one. And we need to remember that 188 is 34 feet of fresh water, and 188 is, is also found at 33 feet of seawater. So you need more fresh water to exert the same pressure on a diver, okay? Uh, and that's uh, 14.7 PSI, right? So if we divide that between these uh, depths, we have that for fresh water is 0.432 PSI per feet, while in salt water is gonna be 0.445 PSI, a little bit higher. Now, an important thing uh, about uh, the water is, is it is amazing. And, and I study this in, you know, in physical uh, oceanography is, and is the relationship between temperature, density, and salinity. Uh, because as you change one, one of the other two will need to adapt to that change. So density is simply defined as the mass per unit volume. Uh, and in many of the gas laws deal with changes in volume. And volume may also be used to relate with density or weight. So as we say, it goes back and forward. And weight is the effect of the pull of gravity on an object. So I, I wanted to do a small um, demonstration here, but uh, maybe for time reasons, I won't be able to do that. But what I wanted to do is for example, to have uh, two cups of water, one with uh, fresh water, and one with uh, salty water and try to mix it. And, uh, and you can try this at home and put a colorant in one of the two solutions. And as you mix it, see what the result is, how that uh, uh, fluid change. The same if you have you like cold water and hot water and you try to mix it, uh, see what the result is going to be. Where the, 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 the cold water stays, it stays on the surface and it sinks to the bottom. And all this is important when we dive because actually we need to make the adjustments as we dive under these different conditions or these conditions changing. Uh, during our dive, we will uh, suffer uh, or we will experience a thermocline, which is like the surface layer of the water will, will be warmer. And as we go to the bottom, we start feeling uh, um, uh, cooler water. So that's what is called the thermocline. As we pass the thermocline, we will experience colder water. The same will happen with the uh, salinity of the water, which is called the alkaline. And when the density changes, it's called pycnocline. Now, there are four basic God's laws that are concerned to the advanced scuba divers. These laws are Boyle's law, Charles law, Gould Lussac's law, the Dalton's law, and Henry's law. So let's go a little bit in detail on each one of these, okay? Uh, so Boyle's law, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, uh, states that the temperature remain constant, the pressure and volume of any gas are inversely related. Another way to state is that uh, as pressure increase, volume decrease, and as a pressure decrease, volume increase. So we see here uh, the pressure expressed as absolute uh, uh, atmosphere, one, two, three, four, five, and then of course the depth. So as we increase the depth, we increase the pressure. Therefore, there is a compression of the gas, okay? And, um, and as we ascend again and that uh, pressure decrease, then the, there is a decompression of the gas and increase in the volume. 
There is a relationship of pressure and volume can be expressed on this formula with pressure one uh, times volume one is equal pressure two uh, times volume two. And this, this formula is very used to, uh, to make calculations on different issues related to scuba diving. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, Boyle's law is the one that rules the breathing volume. Uh, it's important for air clearing, the, uh, you know, the mass squeeze, as we see here, is we have a, a air uh, volume between the mass and our eyes, so we can suffer mass squeeze. Wetsuit compression that will affect our buoyancy and is the, what, what rules the pressures injuries. The second one is the Charles law. Charles law states if the pressure of a gas is constant, then the volume of the gas varies directly with temperature. Louis uh, Gay-Lussac concluded that equal volumes of all gases expands equally with the same increase in temperature. This conclusion is usually called Charles uh, Law in order to Jack Charles, who had arrived to the same conclusion 15 years early, but did not publish it. Uh, so what we see in this, and I had another experiment that you can try at home, uh, it just have, for example, a uh, um, glass jar and put it empty, put it inside of boiling water. When it heats up, put a balloon on the top of it and see what happens. So as the air inside of that jar starts to heat up, the volume is going to increase because it's going to increase the pressure. And that is, is one of the most important things that we use as divers to understand, uh, you know, or the volume of air in our cylinders. So we can have constant volume uh, or uh, constant pressure equations. And these are used to calculate exactly that. You know, we can calculate the volume at different pressures or we can calculate the pressure uh, at different volumes. Uh, this is a really important uh, law. There we have Dalton's law. Dalton's law states that in a mixture of gases, the total pressure of the mixture equals the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases. Uh, so for example, down here, we see different gases in the air, which is oxygen, nitrogen, argon, uh, HO2, CO2, and each one of them will have a specific uh, partial pressure. But as we add all the partial pressure, we will have the uh, total pressure for that gas. If we see in this other uh, graph to our left, uh, we have the uh, content at this, and the same pressure of different pressures for different uh, gases. In this, in this case, we have hydrogen or an helium, but uh, the sum of the pressures in the top, right? 2.9 atmosphere plus 7.2 is 10.1. But, and then the partial pressure of the gases in the mix is exactly the same as the uh, partial pressure of the individual gases. Again, at the same volume and at the same temperature. This law is very, very important because it's what really helped us, uh, you know, work toward uh, uh, the mix of gases and rich air nitrox. Uh, well, okay. Now, Henry's law states that the amount of gas that will dissolve in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas, given that the temperature and the molecular movement or agitation of the liquid are constant. Used to explain the use of dye tables and avoid, avoid this compression sickness. So uh, this is what we usually uh, talk about, like the, um, the soda can, okay? So if you have a soda, you don't see any bubbles, you don't see anything because uh, it, the gas is compressed inside of the liquid and is, uh, and is uh, um, stable. Uh, but once you release and uh, you open that uh, can and you change the pressure, it starts to release that extra gas that it, it was absorbed by the liquid. And this happens in our uh, tissues when we breathe air and especially we, our tissues will accumulate nitrogen. 
So the dive tables, what da, what do is to uh, give us some max times that we can be at different depths to avoid the outgas that the outgassing of nitrogen will affect us uh, physically, that we will suffer a kind of uh, an accident, which is our refer as a decompression sickness. Great. So. The next part is buoyancy and Archimedes principle. So buoyancy is the form by which an object floats or sinks. There are three kinds of buoyancy. Uh, of buoyancy. Here we see uh, this one going to space is positive buoyant. The one that sinks is negative buoyant. And the ones that stayed at, um, you know, in the middle of the water column, it, we can call it as neutral. Archimedes principle, states that an object placed in a liquid will be buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the liquid it displaces. Uh, another way to consider uh, Archimedes principle as uh, it relates to buoyancy is in terms of density. Uh, remember that density is weight per unit volume. So if an object is denser than the liquid in which it is placed, it is negatively buoyant and will sink. If an object is less dense than the liquid in which it plays, it will be possibly buoyant. And, and uh, finally, if it has the same density, then it will be neutrally buoyant. We see here, for example, a five kilogram uh, object uh, pour into this uh, water and it displays two kilograms. Therefore, there's only a two kilograms buoyant force but as the object is heavier than that force, therefore this will sink to the bottom. And that's the basic of, you know, you, you, that's why we compensate uh, using weights to try to get that neutral buoyancy, which is the most important thing for us uh, as divers. So one of the, oh my God, it's 15 minutes already. Okay, I wanted to talk about air consumption to, uh, to wrap up real quick. Um, so uh, we have the, 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 the rate as we consume uh, air at the surface is, uh, will, be, will vary as we descend uh, because of the pressure. So when we go to 33 feet or two atmosphere, then we're gonna uh, 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 consume double because the density of the uh, gas is also the double. And therefore, as we uh, go deeper, we're gonna consume more and more. And it's very important to understand your surface air consumption rate because that helps you, uh, you know, to plan a safe dive when you are doing your pre-dive plan. And finally, uh, underwater, there are many more other energies that, uh, uh, you know, that affect us as divers, the light, uh, refraction make things to, to be one third closer and bigger, diffusion creates penumbra in the water, so not all the light goes through, turbidity affects the visibility and the absorption makes uh, changes in the colors as we descend. Uh, also the sound is four times faster in, faster in the water than um, in the air, and therefore it's really difficult to uh, see uh, or to find out which direction a sound is coming because the speed as it, it, the sound reach both ear is basically the same. Heat is very important in evaporation, convection, and radiation, and that will affect the way that we lose heat and uh, we can suffer from uh, other type of incidents uh, like heat stroke or heat exhaustion. However, there are all the physical uh, aspects that we uh, I didn't cover today, like the physical oceanography. So how currents, waves, and tides uh, also affect divers. And, and I hope maybe in the future I can do a lecture just about that aspect of the diving uh, physics. I had a, a small video review. Um, I'm gonna skip that because basically uh, just, it just talks about the Boyce law. But the, the, uh, the bottom line here is to understand that uh, the water uh, exerts a, a force in our body and will affect everything that uh, the diver um, on all aspects of the diver, you know, the air, the compression, how we absorb gases, how we consume the air in our cylinders. 
And all these factors have to be considered in order to make a safe uh, dive plan and to be safe as we dive, um, as we do our dive. I'm gonna conclude here and I appreciate it so I don't take more minutes. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you, Victor. Um, so if you don't mind, since you didn't have the opportunity to show that video, if you will share the URL in the, um, in the chat box uh, and yeah. then in the Facebook live uh, later, you can do it later, just share uh -huh. it there so that, so that everyone can watch it at their convenience. Yes, yes. Okay, so I have a question for you. I have a question for you and I hope others do too. So first off, good job on both lectures. This was, you know, you, you were given less than 24 hours intentionally and you pulled it together and you did a great job. The, um, the laws that you mentioned, um, Charles Law and Gay-Lussac's law were, were pretty close together. Charles was slightly before Gay-Lussac. Um, Gay-Lussac kind of took Charles Law to the next level. But mm -hmm. what law actually happened 100 years earlier than that that is connected to the same concept? Wow, that's a great question. Starts with an A. Hamilton law? Yes, yes, very good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Seeing if you're paying attention. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, you I never remember right Hamilton. <laughs> I didn't know it was 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah it was so, the late 1600s. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, in that part, I didn't pay attention. But That's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's quite all right. Thank you so much. I'd love to see if anyone else has questions for you. Anyone? <laughs> I'm gonna hop over to the to the uh, live stream and see if we've got any questions there. While we're hopefully gonna hear at least one question from somebody who's online with us. Nobody has questions. All right. Well, hearing no questions, uh, you must have done a really good job explaining everything, Victor. So. I I guess. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you one final question. Did anything surprise you in your research for these two presentations? Did you learn anything yourself? Because often when you teach, you learn. Oh, oh, sure. Uh, well, there, there is, it, it is always very good, especially when I was trying to find out a way to explain. And, you know, and I came up with this small um, experiments that you can do at home to explain yourself how these actually in the daily life, there, these laws are occurring, not only in diving, and, and you can use it uh, in different ways or, it, it, or doing the experiment, you can understand better the principles behind the laws, right? So for example, that one having the jar inside of a boiling water and put the balloon on it, uh, it makes you realize that, uh, yeah, really, the, the, the air is expanding as it warms up, and then the pressure increase, and therefore, the balloon is going to start, uh, you know, inflating. And th that, that can be very surprising. And this is the kind of, of, of experiments that I want to try with my daughter. I'm going to share a link with an experiment I did years ago with my, with my youngest daughter. It was so hilarious. It was something <laughs> like that. That's great. Yeah, I agree I that's, that that's... experiments are awesome. They're a lot of fun and they really, instead of just learning, you actually see the application of the laws to, to reality and it's fun. That's great. that's great. That's great. And sometimes bonding, you know, the laws with how you apply those laws into your daily diving is, is, is very, you know, eye opening. Uh, you know, just to make sure, okay, okay, I, I'm getting it more, it makes more, more, more sense. Every time you read, you go through that and you teach it, it makes more and more sense. Absolutely. Any final thoughts or questions for Victor before we call it a night? All right, um, Ronnie's giving you applause. So let me, let me see here. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. You can stop sharing your screen. And um, let me just say, Victor, congratulations. You have successfully completed all requirements to earn your instructor certification. 
And the kids yeah. that you're going to be teaching for 4-H um, are just the beginning of, you know, the, the beneficial things that you're going to do with the certification. And I look forward to working with you, continuing to work with you and to cheer you on and to support you in any way that I can. So I appreciate, I appreciate, you know, I started diving 35 years ago and I have hundreds of dives uh, that I've done through my life. Uh, I never thought about really moving forward into uh, becoming an instructor because, you know, my career, I live out of my career, but uh, something happened that made me change that. And, and I realized that scuba diving can be a really important educational tool and especially to be able to bring access to some people to experience as I did, because that changed my life for good. And I, I just hope if I can change one person's life uh, in, in the future, uh, my mission will be accomplished. So I, I'm really looking forward to do that. You're going to change a lot of lives, Victor, and you already have. So thank you. And you are getting a lot of words of congratulations. Um, yeah, Jacob here says congratulations. And uh, Jacob. Caroline on the live stream said congrats. And I have a feeling there'll be a bunch more after this is over. So thank you. And don't forget to share that link if you don't mind in the live stream. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I will. All right. That's for sure. Congratulations, Victor. <laughs> Yay. One more Take care, for everybody. <laughs> All right. Bye. Take the picture before you go. Oh, okay. Take a, I will. Uh, take a right. yeah. Take a All picture. Right. Or let me. See Ronnie, yeah. Let's see you. Come on, Ronnie. Hey, Jacob, are you able to be seen? Okay. Smile, everybody. Great. <laughs> awesome. Oh wait, I got to do the okay signs. Yep. Okay. One more. Do the okay signs, everybody. <laughs> All right. Very good. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all guys, Bill, uh, uh, Jamie, uh, Ronnie, Jacob, and especially you, Gabrielle. Thank you so much for, for um, leading me all, all the way. So thank Absolutely. you. I'm very, very thankful. Thank you. I'll message you after with some, uh, some administrative stuff and just make sure we're good. Okay. Sure. All yeah. right. Good night, everybody. Best Looking forward to diving with most of you on Saturday too. <laughs> okay. Bye.